Welcome, Dory. Hi, Lori. <laughs> I'm so happy to interview you today. So you are one of the strongest, most amazing people that I know, with great attitude. So especially with all that you're going through. So tell me a little bit about what's happening in your life right now. <sighs> well, where would you like me to begin? <laughs> in a nutshell, and then we'll go in back. In a nutshell. Um, I'm currently still being treated for stage four um, B ovarian cancer and peritoneal carcinoma. So I've had my surgery about six weeks ago and I still have two more rounds of chemo left um, before we can finally say that this journey is, at least this part of the journey has come to an end. An end. So Dory, tell me about um, how you felt when you first heard the news. <sighs> um, well, the way I found out was probably not really the normal way. You know, I had been, uh, I had gone to see a gastroenterologist and because we thought that it was a gastro problem, had no idea it was a gyne gynecological problem. And uh, so after they did the CT scan, the results were actually posted on what's called my chart, which is um, the way the University of Utah here keeps track of your records so that um, you can get in and see like your test results or um, your medications, appointments, stuff like that. And so I got on my chart and um, the results of my CT scan were posted and the doctor had not called me yet. So the first thing you're reading, you know, the radiologist report and all this stuff and it's looking horrible. And then I get to the big words, epithelial cancer, peritoneal carcinomatosis mm -hmm. was the first diagnosis contingent of a, a metastatic, I can't say the word. Metastatic. Metastatic mm -hmm. spread of ovarian um, cancer. So I'd look up the words, you know, with Dr. Google and <laughs> the peritoneal carcinomatosis. I, 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 my heart sunk because I knew I was gonna die because there's a 2% chance of living from that. To find that out on Google, I mean. And, you know, and really, not be t explained yeah. by a doctor what everything really meant. Mm -hmm. I was a wreck, and my friend James um, was here. James and Dee both were here, and he was the first person that was here, and I, and I showed him paper and said, would you read this and tell me? And he started to cry, and we just cried, because um, I knew I was just not gonna make it. And um, so that was my first reaction was, I'm gone. Yeah, that's, nobody wants to hear that, read that, live that. Plus, it was over um, a four-day holiday weekend, yeah. And so I had it. I couldn't talk to anybody until Tuesday, right? But for me, what was uh, very lucky was that um, on Monday, which was a holiday that day, it was September. Was uh, whatever is it Labor Day? That's in September, I believe. Yeah. Whatever, whichever holiday that is, and I was at my uh, dear friend's house and she, I, crying and telling her about what had happened, and I had my, you know results there on my computer and she called her boyfriend who um, whose son-in-law is a an oncology radiologist up at the Huntsman Cancer Institute and he called me like yeah. within 30 minutes and we we you know I told him everything that it said and he really calmed me down but he's the one that just completely abdicated he got me in I got a phone call on Tuesday from the um, oncology surgeon's office and I had an appointment by Wednesday I don't think that would have happened yeah I think it would have been a longer process and I would have been in more pain and stuff yeah. so I got fortunate with that that's awesome so I was in immediately so you've been going through treatment for how long now uh, since September, I think my first one was around September 11th, somewhere around there. Okay. And then you just had surgery six weeks ago. Yep. I had my Time's surgery flown. on November 26th. I had mm -hmm. my, I had three chemo, three, um, chemo sessions that my last one was October 31st before my surgery. And then my surgery was November 26th. And then I was in the hospital for about nine and a half days. So they had to take out, um, <laughs> all my spare organs almost <laughs> so they took both of if my there ovaries is such a thing but yeah, yeah yeah well you know all I have left is a gallbladder and a spare kidney so there you go <laughs> but they did have to take like both of my ovaries both of my fallopian tubes I had already had a hysterectomy 20 years ago so you know the the uh the uterus and the cervix was gone already. They took my spleen. There was cancer in my spleen. They took my appendix, not because there was cancer in it, but because it was hard. And mm -hmm. they called it woody. 
So it was gonna have to go anyways at some point. Um, they took my Omentum, which is the fatty, um, it's like a fatty apron that drapes the colon. Mm -hmm. And so they had to take that just because cancer likes to hide in there. Mm -hmm. And so they removed that. And then they um, took my diaphragm and pulled it out and completely stripped it, kind of like if you think about like the fatty tissue that's on a piece of meat and they you peel that off so you don't cook it. They had to do that to my diaphragm and then put that back in and then they just completely scraped the whole peritoneal where the chemo ahead of time had killed any other, there was lots of little tumors that were just um, burnt, burnt out, like they look like black tissue. So they had to scrape all of that. And then she felt along my um, small intestines where they could, she could feel lymph nodes. Yeah. Um, they were all under one centimeter except for one. And so she was able to remove that one. There was cancer in that, she removed that. But then um, the, uh, the other ones they had to leave in because they would have had to take the whole mesentery and then you just die if you don't have that. So they just left those. They were under one millimeter anyways. And then the other thing is the, the lining above my diaphragm, they had to completely strip because there was cancer in there. Wow. So that was all burnt out from the chemo. And then the two lymph nodes they got to leave because there was nothing left in there. So yeah. And so, then I had chemo on December 17th. So that was exactly three weeks after my surgery. Wow. So here you are now, this far out. This has actually been kind of a quick journey from September to now. It's a lot. It's been a lot. Yeah. So today, I don't know quick for some people. It seems quick. I would say you know, yeah. but it's felt like it's like been a whirlwind, a whole year, yeah, <laughs> or more. Right. Yeah. Well, today you went to the doctor. Today and I went. What did they say? For my six-week checkup, and uh, well, we had to postpone. I had I was scheduled for my second or my. I'm supposed to have six rounds, so I've had four so far. So my fifth round was supposed to be last week, but I was having so many stomach issues after my surgery. I haven't been able to eat very well, and then they did chemo three weeks, and that just wrecked my digestive system. And so we've postponed it until next Monday is when I have my fifth one. Um, so we went in today for my checkup and everything is surgically fine. Um, my incisions are healing, but the digestive stuff unfortunately is really due to not having full ability to recover without having to go back in and do the chemo. So the chemo is really, exasperating all of these issues with my digestive and so basically it's kind of like it's how it's going to be until the chemo's over and my insides and my digestive system can finally heal but um, it's just good to know that there's nothing wrong there's no blockages there's no um, scar tissue from the surgery causing these problems which was a little bit of a scare and concern for me because yeah. there's just days that um, just sucks. <laughs> yeah, but you did get some good, some but, good news. But I got great news. Yeah, she told me today that um, basically I'm cancer free. The um, yay. <laughs> yeah, then the last the reason that they do the last um, couple of chemos is to get anything that's uh, microscopic that they can't see with the eye in a scan or feel. Yeah. Um, but they've everything was they were able to get everything, which to me is amazing yeah. considering how late in the game that I was. I had less than six months to live. My tumor was stage like four a great, four, and, well then stage yeah. four B, which is like, yeah. you know, you're just not gonna live. The longer. end of stage four. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so to me it's amazing because, and what I've learned and what was told to me is actually ovarian cancer responds really well. 80% of women will respond to the treatment for ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. The problem is they don't find it until it's late because it's masked. There's not a lot of symptoms yeah. up until it's late. And most of the symptoms you're going to get at the beginning are just like, oh, I'm not digesting, I'm bloated. You know, how many of us don't ever right. get that? You know, I've eaten too much. Yeah. Oh, I'm kind of gassy. It's hard to tell. Yeah. yeah. But I had one that was outstanding that I don't think is a normal one, and mine was my breath. Mm. was really, really bad for over two years. So I had that symptom going on for a really long time. The other symptoms were stuff that I've been having, you know, forever, you know? Yeah. You're under stress, your stomach doesn't feel yeah, good. Right. You know, you eat, you get bloated, yep. you know? It's hard for us the to fact distinguish. That, yes, and the fact that I didn't feel that mass till later blows my mind because I've been right. fit mm -hmm. most of my life and lean and I just started, <laughs> when, my, when my stomach was expanded, I was just thinking, 
Well, you know, I am 55, so I guess at some point, <laughs> and it wasn't that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I was excited to hear your news, so I'm glad we got to share it here today. Thank you.